Hey guys, Hallie with Keep It Dirty. Today I'm coming from inside my house because it's too fucking hot outside. It's over 100 degrees and I don't want to be out there. It just sucks. So today we're covering the top three mods you should do to your Raptor if you plan on taking it off-road. Now this is mainly for the guys that want an off-road stock. I think the Raptor is probably one of the most capable and versatile vehicles out there. You can buy those straight off the lot and go play in the dirt same day if you wanted to. Not many vehicles can do that. But like every other vehicle out there, it's not perfect. Ford built it to be an all-around vehicle so that it can give you the best fuel economy and also be drivable on the road. But let's be honest, less than 10% of us will actually take our Raptors on the dirt. Now, if you're watching this video, you're in that top 10%. You bought a Raptor to go play in the desert. So I'm going to go over the top three mods that I recommend to reduce your damage when you're going off-road and get more use out of your truck. Number three, bump stops. Bump stops. The stock bump stocks that come on the Raptor are kind of a joke. I mean, like, look at this thing. This thing's not going to prevent any damage. I mean, it's it only compresses about an inch, and I've destroyed mine. As you can see, mine are pretty bent up, and where this one was actually installed, my actual frame was bent because this thing didn't do much. So you're going to need more protection if you plan to off-road your truck. Going faster with the Raptor is very addictive, and you're eventually going to be at full tuck somewhere in that back end, and you're going to need more protection. Now, you have a couple options when it comes to upgrades here. You can go with an enlarged rubber bump stop, you know, but they can get very pricey. There's a lot of options up there. I'm gonna, you know, show you guys one right here. And it'll basically extend that length and give you more protection than just this silly little inch you get from the factory. On the higher end side, you should go with like an air bump system, a pneumatic bump stop system. And I highly recommend you start looking at some of the big manufacturers like RPG, SVC, and Icon. You know, and in my experience, the RPG kit's probably the most cost effective, one of the strongest you can get, with Icon probably having one of the better design kits, but it's very complicated and it has a lot of parts to install, right? But it's a worthwhile protection for your Raptor. Number two on the list, raise the front end. Now, we talked about this before. If you already watched one of my other videos, the front end of the Raptor is a little too low. It's great for pavement crawling, but it really sucks for off-road. You know, the nose is always getting buried. It's always getting damaged. If you plan on doing any kind of jumps or get any kind of speed with the truck, you need to raise that nose end a little bit, at least, a, at least an inch, maybe more. There's a couple options on how to do it. You can do a perch, SVC, RPG, all those guys make a perch for the Raptor to raise it up, but that still leaves the stock springs that are a little bit soft. What I run and what I recommend is guys are off-road springs. They're gonna give you the best bang for your buck and it's gonna really protect that front end without making it too soft. Or you can go with shocks like Kings or, or Fox if you wanted to go the more expensive route. Now, I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about this because we've already talked about this in our Raptor suspensions on a budget video. So if you wanna go check that out, link will be here or here, I don't know, I'll put it one there. <laughs> okay, now the number one mod that I recommend for any Raptor owner, and this applies to just about any off-road vehicle, honestly, because most of the manufacturers don't do this, is you need a camber caster kit. The first couple of months I had my truck, I basically had to do an alignment every month. And sometimes you have to do an alignment after every off-road run. The reason for that is because the lower control arms are actually on a slot, a sliding slot, and it's meant to be, you know, adjustable. The only problem is, is you can only adjust and tighten the bolt so much before it gets knocked out, right? I mean, it's going to get knocked out. You're going to hit a big hit or something like that. It's going to mess up your alignment. So a lot of you guys that have Raptors or have any off-road vehicles, you'll notice every time you go out, the alignment gets out. And some of you guys will do like the Firestone lifetime alignment, and you really don't need to do that. What you need to do is get a caster camber kit, which locks your alignment in place on those lower control arms. The caster camera kits are actually strong enough to deal with off-road abuse. Ever since I got mine installed over a year and a half ago, I've only had to go back in and do an alignment once, and that's after I bent the frame. Yeah, that sucks. There's a lawn dart in the desert. <laughs> now, you have a couple options here when it comes to caster camera kits. The most cost-effective option would be a kit from Specialty Products. Specialty Products makes an HD kit for the Raptor that's essentially a nut with a welded-on washer, and it allows you to lock the alignment in place. If you do order these, you are going to need two kits, one per side for the front and the back of the lower control arm, and they run about $70 per kit, so all in you're looking at about $140. Plus, you're going to have to do an alignment afterwards. Any alignment shop can actually sell you these 
and install them for you. But if you want, we have a link down in the description in our Amazon and you can go into our Amazon and get a direct link to the actual kit for the F-150s or the Raptors. Now on the higher end, you have a forged off-road alignment and reinforcement kit. Now these kits are a weld on kit that reinforces the lower control arms as well. So it's not just, it takes care of the alignment, it actually reinforces the lower control arms quite a bit. And the reason I recommend forged off-roads kit is because their kit's unique. If you don't want to weld your kit on, they have a bolt-on option that still adds reinforcement. So it's unique. It's probably the only one I've seen in the industry. So definitely give those guys a check out. Kit's about $500, so you both get an alignment kit and some reinforcement in those lower controls. That's very much needed. But the only drawback with these kits is it's a little bit more involved. If you design to go weld on, you're gonna need some professional installation. Plus, you're gonna have to do an alignment afterwards. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to subscribe. You know, help me spread the word so we can start making more of these videos. If you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. You can also email us at keepitdirtyoffroad at gmail.com. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.